Hello, this is Captain Sweep coming back with PG-003, part two of number one session. Okay, so I'd like to give a little bit of a download about my uh, take on values. And um, for, I guess for, for most of the last 25 years, part of the work I've been doing is playing with values. And one of the decks in the Conscious Communication card set is a values deck of about 96 cards. And this methodology of placing a value on a specific function or place is one of the sort of discoveries that I, I think that has been made in, in this work. And in a lot of the places where I examine businesses that had value systems, they would usually have some sort of hierarchy. They would have usually responsibility, integrity, honesty, all the nice values, but it would be like a, 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 a plaque on a wall. And what I didn't see was a direct implementation of these values within the operating system of the company. The values were usually implemented by the CEO or the, uh, the charter, the uh, management team that would sort of, uh, let's say, run the company by these values, supposedly. And any company that was very values driven, I remember seeing a paper saying that the companies that were values driven were sort of like twice as profitable as other companies. So any value, any company that has put a lot of attention on values does very well. And looking at spiritual traditions, you know, most spiritual traditions have values like mercy and courage and love and uh, temperance and all the other good words as the basis for what was being taught and as the basis for what was being shared within that spiritual tradition. And so in business and in the spiritual side, values played a very prominent role at least the research I was doing and finding out, you know, why humans act the way they do. And there's a model called the, you might want to write this down, the six logical levels of thinking. And it's a, a model, I think, by Robert Diltz. And I can send it to you afterwards. But it has vision at the top, and then identity, and then values, and then capabilities, and then behaviors, and then environment. I can repeat that. I come up to the top is vision. Underneath that is identity. Underneath that is values. Underneath that is capabilities. Underneath that is behaviors. And underneath that is environment. And if you look at any model, some models have values as part of the, the model. And so this particular model struck me as one of the best models that I saw. And it's like if you, let's say you're at the identity level and you're a, a cook and you have the value of cleanliness and you have the capability to clean and your behavior is cleaning in the environment of your kitchen and you have the vision of this perfect, perfectly clean kitchen. Or let's say you're a carpenter, your identity is a carpenter and you value, you know, excellence and that excellence goes into your capabilities of, of how good you are at building what you build. And then at the behavior levels, the actual building that you're doing within the environment, again, of your workplace at some kind of job site. So it's, it's a way of looking through six different levels at human experience with values, organizing those capabilities and, and behaviors within an environment. And I, and I think when you're building your cognitive structure, you're trying to figure out how all these concepts relate to one another. And what I was looking for is universal constructs, universal models that apply to every human being that seem a bit independent of just a belief system. So everyone does behaviors, everyone has capabilities, everyone has values, everyone has identities, vision, I'm thinking everyone has that and everyone is in an environment. These are six words that are very, very um, high in level of abstraction and they organize a lot of things underneath it. And so uh, I'd like to go back to each of you and to just kind of ask you, is there one model? Is there some specific model that you have sort of used or chosen as the most important model that you use in your thinking, in your business, in whatever you do. And uh, I'll go to you, uh, Daniil, for that. No, no, there isn't. Um, I, I've learned a number of different models over the years that I 
try to apply just to gain different perspectives on things. But no, there is no one default one that I go to. Is, 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 and I might even ask on top of that was like, how do you organize your mind? I don't think I do, at least not consciously. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the things that I'm constantly doing is trying to find out or, or learn about myself what drives me. So there's a, a kind of series of whys that lead me to deeper and deeper conclusions. Um, or, or sometimes I, I realize that the answers I previously given myself were incorrect or have evolved. So I'm, I'm trying to find root causes of things, whether it be things that I'm unhappy with, things that I'm happy with, um, fear, desire, whatever it is that's um, nudging me or driving me in a particular direction. Okay. Uh, Michelle? I don't really have one. Uh, there's one I like, though. It came from dialectical behavior therapy. And it's uh, two circles intersecting, and one circle has what's called your like, emotional mind. So all your side of the circle would be your logical mind. So the orderly, very like analytical, step-by-step -step kind of mind, and then their intercept, the best key spicy, is the wise mind. And so, yeah, just trying to find balance between like your logical self and your expressive emotional self. But I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I really have an organization kind of concept for that, my mind, but I, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Matthew? Um, there's a book called uh, Traction by Gino Wakeman, <clears throat> and he's got a system called the VTO, which is the Vision Traction Organizer, and it's colossal and life-changing, was for me at least. Gave me a whole new perception on how to deal with these things, vision, identity, values, etc., behaviors, even with a team and a whole company. So that one really rocked my world and comes foremost. Um, how I organize my life. I built a system. Um, I don't know what to call it. The dream life system where you can basically, it's a proven model where you can take everything you want to do, everything that you don't do yet, but you know you want to do, but maybe don't give yourself permission or tell yourself that you can't do it. And then all the stuff that you have to do that you don't want to do. So all three categories, I have a, a way to get them from an intuitive place to uh, on paper sort of place and then add it into your schedule or your calendar so that you can build any life you want. In particular, your character. It's not like how to go, it all, everything on the outside is a reflection of the inside. So it's all inner work. Uh, I don't know what to call that. So that's how I think in terms of my calendar. I think a lot in terms of time and space and calendar and I'm quite effective at it. And then also how I think is I think in networks. So when I think of people, I'm like, how do I know them? Usually it's not a thinking because I don't think these thoughts. I just feel like I have a network, but it's how do I know them? But it's based on feeling usually, or what is our transaction? Like what is our transaction right now? And I have that with all the people in my life, but they're feelings. They're like friendships. Um, there's a couple, a couple ideas. That's great. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Lindsay. Uh, currently nothing that's very active. Um, there's definitely been a lot of things that have come through in my life and world, but nothing that I've ever, um, that I use right now. Um, and you had another question that was on how do I organize my mind? My instant thought was like, great fucking question. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Closest that I've ever gone to is just like obsessing over videos of like how the brain works and neurology and habits and learning about psychology and um, like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy and like random things like that. Um, I've 
yeah, I think that that's the closest that I've come to on that. And it's sort of like your brain is like this really awesome tool that when it learns something about how it actually functions, it unconsciously begins to function better if the information that it's learned is like kind of seen as like an upgrade to a computer. It's like, oh, this is how you can do this better, this faster. It kind of like does that automatically and you get better at doing it. Um, but yep, that's closest that I've come to in any of those regards. So no official formats, just obsessing over videos and reading material. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I think that the five spaces map of all the maps I've ever done is the simplest one to explain our patterns and to identify, let's say, our shadows uh, because us by ourselves is very different from us talking with one person, which is very different from us in a group, which is very different from us in a, in a much larger group. And so each of us has different roles in these different places. And I think what you're going to do is you're going to start to see the spaces. You are going to know, oh, I'm in the one-on-one -on -one space. Okay, now I'm in the group space. And then you're going to start to become aware of how are you? What patterns do you have? I know that if I'm in one-on-one, -on -one, as soon as a third person comes in, everything's different. The group space to me is very different from the one-on-one -on -one space. And that's where I think a lot of our trauma is with our families and with our uh, schools, where we grew up in a high school, right? Community space, little group spaces everywhere, one-on-ones, and nobody teaching communication. Nobody teaching how to really use you know, your mind and your expression and your thinking to discern the differences between the different contexts you're in. And so one thing I, I give to you for the, for, the, for the next week is for you to look at yourself in these different spaces and then to sort of track this value that you've chosen and start to see how much, like give a percentage. If, if there was 100% was the greatest extent of that value, where are you at? Actually, this is an exercise for you right now. If 10 was the highest you could be in this and zero was the worst, rate yourself right now in each of these values. Like if your leadership was uh, in sacred space and you said, okay, well, I think I'm at a five. But that means you can only go, there's only five to go to 10. You may go, I'm only at a one. You know, I'm, not, I'm not even starting. So right now, just do that. Five thousand. <laughs> what? what? A bit of work to do. <laughs> Minus five thousand. Holy cow! I think we would either call that an atheist or extreme disappointment. <laughs> if there's a god, god damn it, it's just not working out for me. Take that sacred space and stop it, man. <laughs> Is everyone finished? Yep. Okay. Okay, Lindsay, why don't we start off with you since you've got that uh, that doozy in the middle. Um, personal space, uh, I would say is actually because it's so, my life is so different than what it was and who I am is in such a different dynamic than what it's ever been at um, that without, uh, it's just basically a zero. I'm starting from scratch. Okay. <laughs> but it's a good it's a, it's a good zero it's a happy zero it's a refreshing <laughs> zero <laughs> this is not a negative <laughs> no, it's not. um one-on-one -on -one space all well because my value is awareness i also put that as a zero um because i feel like like it's incredibly awareness is present um but that there's i'm creating an open space for it to be able to start a different kind of awareness that i might not be aware of right now so i'm leaving that as zero to be able to allow as much going into that as possible okay um community space was at three because my value is stability um so moving but not there um group space um I actually changed my value. I replaced it with skill building and practical knowledge, which maybe isn't a value, but I feel like practical knowledge can be a value, um, possibly. Um, but I put that as a four. Um, 
Wait, F8. which one? Which one was that? For group for group space. So you changed it from joy. Yeah, because I didn't. I wasn't really connecting with that. So skill building is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I see okay. that kind of and a bit of a dynamic as like like school and just learning things within large groups. Um, so I put that as a four. Okay. Like best in that realm than all the others. And in the middle. Negative five thousand. Oh, minus, minus your. <laughs> okay, well, there's always room for. I think that would you would call that rock bottom. <laughs> Yo, Elijah, can I go next here? Because yes. I have a seven. Okay. okay. Um, great. So here we go. I did change my circle around a bit. It, it happened a few times on what we'd call an intuitive level. So here's what I got, my friend. Is um, I have joy in group space. And I gave myself a three out of 10 on my effectiveness in that particular thing. Okay. And then personal space is devotion. And I gave myself a three out of 10 on that one there too. Okay. Sacred space, I moved volume as the um, value. And I wrote two, two out of 10. And I felt a bit harsh about that. Um, but I like the room for improvement and I know what's possible. Okay. Um, Leadership is now in community space. Okay. That's a five out of 10. Okay. And then one-on-one -on -one space gets presence as a value, which I gave myself seven out of 10. Nice. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Daniel? So in personal space, I've got contentment with a five. In one-to-one, -one, I've got love with a six. In community, I've got purpose with a three. In group, I have belonging with a five, and in sacred, I have joy with a four. Okay, excellent. And Michelle? Can't hear you. I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> um, Did Matthew just leave? <laughs> I think he had to go. Okay. First of all space, I have truth or clarity at a two. One-on-one -on -one space, I have authentic expression at a five. Strongest for me, it's easiest to exist in that space. Uh, community space, I have love or forgiveness at a five. And then uh, group space, I have courage or bravery at a two. <laughs> and sacred space, I have contentment and acceptance at a two as well. Okay. Excellent. Okay, I didn't do that with the other team, so that's a bit of a new twist of giving the reference point of the number. I like it. I like it because then, you know, a year from now, you can look back and go, hey, man, I was at minus 5,000 and I'm only minus 499 now. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've got an assignment for, for you to do for the week, um, to do for the next uh, class. And it's two, actually two assignments. The first one is to write down seven lifetime goals. <laughs> Lindsay seems very uh, with that one. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going. <laughs> so I better have an idea. The second thing, is for you to do that five space map facilitated process with somebody. You can do more than one, but do it with at least one person. And if you did it in Zoom like this and it sent it to me, that would be great. You don't have to, you could do it in person. But um, just do the process yourself. So what you're learning here, part of this is everything that I'm doing here with you you can do with others. You have permission to use this technology or whatever it is to teach others. And so at some point, if you want to be the person in here and be like me and take a group of four people through and charge your 25 and make your 100 an hour, you can do that as soon as you feel confident enough to do that. You can do that over and over again. And uh, part of this is giving a minimum wage to all planetary guardians of $100 an hour. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And right now we're just experiencing it. So. That's it for the week, and um, I'd like to give you each a, a few, uh, you can say whatever you want, 
um, as a goodbye or whatever, whatever it comes to you, and then we'll sign off. And uh, Daniil, you want to start? I think you've given me some interesting things to think about. I'm, I'm, I'm most interested next in learning the how. So great, we, we have this recognition of where we are, um, but usually it's the execution of how to get to the, the better place that's the challenging part. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to uh, understanding that path and I'm happy to have met some new interesting people. Awesome, Lindsay. Can't hear you. I was just a wave hello to Daniil. That was <laughs> the eye next kind of thing. Um, anyways, um, thoughts? Yeah, this is really good and feels good to be doing stuff like this. Um, feels good to have the brain get back into looking at the world like this again and reconnecting and evaluating myself and life in this format. Um, yeah. All y'all are great. It's nice to meet you. Happy to work with all of you. I like your maps. Thanks, Thanks a lot, yeah. You're welcome. Michelle? Yeah, I'm really curious. And I'm also very excited to share the map with a couple of friends and see what kind of uh, atmosphere that brings for us all. Thank you, Elijah. And nice to meet you both and Michael as well. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll end up with something here where uh, Lori Renton made a map 10 years ago, a different type of map, but another map with the values. And her whole business is running from that one map. She, she didn't get any training, didn't get a manual, basically did the map and that was it. And, but that map guided her just by itself. And I've done you know probably hundreds of maps with different people and some people said, yeah, I never looked at the map again. Brought out a closet and looked at it, and then I asked them, you know, are, do you have more integrity at agreements? Do you have more cooperation at, at the field? And, you know, they, they, they were amazed at what had occurred in their life since then and what lessons they had learned in regards to it. So I'm just saying there's a bit of magic to this map. I mean, there, there are different ways that we can dive in, and uh, one quick way would be to do a blog entry to write down what does that value within that space mean to you? Like journaling is a very good part of this. So if you want to go deeper in and, and start to write what this is, just kind of like what you did before, Daniel, uh, I think that would be a strong suggestion to do that if you, if you want to go deeper. Um, but I, I would just say that this is the first map and we're just going to keep adding pieces. So we're, we're building up a methodology for you to format your mind in a way that then you start to see the world in a new manner and then have the ability to change how you see the world by changing conceptual lenses and by having discernment around what different fields and contexts that you're in with people and then having the ability to sort of shape shift and come up with different roles and different uh, communication methodologies uh, in such contexts. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, this is the end of Planetary Guardian number three, mission one. And uh, to our viewing audience, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.